Shalom. <clears throat> I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Ha Reka Kudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. I also want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Alright? So today the Spirit has me um, in, in Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to go into uh, regeneration or reincarnation. Okay? Because contrary to uh, what modern Christianity has taught you, um, reincarnation, regeneration is biblical. Alright? It's in the Bible. So we're going to start on Ecclesiastes verse 1. And it reads... <clears throat> The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. All right, so that tells you that's King Solomon, because Solomon was uh, David's son, right? And he was the king at this time. Verse 2, the king of Israel, the king of Jerusalem. Verse 2, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. All right, so when you, when you look into that word vanity, it means useless. So really the, what the preacher is telling you, what King Solomon is telling you is everything is useless. You know, um, the only thing that matters, especially in these times, is the, uh, is the understanding of this truth, is the understanding of this Holy Bible, is the understanding of who you are as a, as a people. And if you, you know, because why? Because those of us that repent, who come back into who we truly are, well, we, we're the ones who are going to receive salvation. The rest is going to be destroyed in uh, World War III, which is going to be fought with nuclear fire. All right? That's why he was saying everything is useless. And King Solomon, you got to remember, he had everything anybody ever wanted. He had riches, he had wealth, he had, he had cattle, animals, he had, uh, he had uh, women, you know? He had so many things that what it was his conclusion, even after having all those riches and all those uh, and all those uh, all those things that he had, he came to the conclusion that it was all useless. You see. Um, let me let me look that, look that up. Because there's a verse that tells you about King Solomon's wealth. go to first kings because remember this is a man who had more wealth than anybody on the planet earth but yeah he's saying everything is useless so first king well let me let me backtrack let me go back to this to my scripture here because i gotta find the verse i'm looking for Even um, Queen of Sheba, when she came to visit Solomon, she was amazed at not only at his uh, wisdom, but also at his wealth, you know? So, let's, let's get that. And by the way, I'm on a subject of regeneration and reincarnation. And whether you're able to receive it or not, um, Yahweh Shai and King Solomon were the same, were the same, uh, soul all right let me go to uh first kings 10 and i'm gonna go to verse 23 it says so so king solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and wisdom See, so that's what I was just saying. And we're going to jump down to... Let's see. Well, that, that's good enough on that because made the point. He, he, was, he had wealth and wisdom. He had everything. 
So now we're in verse 2. Or I'm sorry, verse 3. It says, What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and, go, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to the place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north, it whirleth about continually. And the wind returneth again according to his circuits. Alright? So now he's going into he's going to, he's he's getting ready to explain reincarnation, regeneration. First he tells you that one generation passes away and another one comes. He says this even the sun, right? The sun arises and then it goes down and then it goes back to the place where it arose. So he's, he's telling you everything is a cycle, a circle, and it, and it keeps happening. Alright, so watch, verse 7, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So even the water, right, the water is even regenerated, recycled, you know, um, verse 8, all things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. See, the eye can never be satisfied with what you see, and, and your ear you, you can never be filled with hearing. So he's comparing all of these things that are in cycles. They don't, like the river, like he said, the rivers flow into the sea, but the sea doesn't become full. No, why? Because it's re recycling. It's, it's going in a, like we talk about living waters. Those waters are moving, and it's a continual cycle, just like everything is. All right, he's going to read it. He's going to break it down. Verse 8, all things, oh, I'm sorry, verse 9, the thing that hath been, it, ha it is that will shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So now he's telling you whatever has been, it's already been. Whatever has been done, it's already been done. So literally, there's no new no, new thing under the sun. All right. You saw Edom's new world order. I, I was in, going in on on uh, on my lesson yesterday how his new world order is nothing. That's not even new. He tried doing that in the in the Greek Maccabees. He tried Tower of Babel. Those are all examples of a one world order. Right? The same thing now, Esau Edom, so-called white man, he's trying to Im implement a new world order. See? It's nothing new under the sun. We just read it. And including people. Alright? Verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. You hear that? It says, is there anything in the sun that you could ask if this is the new a new thing? And the answer is no. Because it's already been in the ancient times. And it, it includes it includes human beings. It, it includes people. Because you gotta understand your soul, your soul never dies, it's your body that dies. Your soul comes back and you're regenerated to the fourth and to the fourth and fifth generation according to the scriptures. All right. When well, I'm gonna go in on more of this, I'm not just gonna sit here and give you lip service. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in, proving regeneration and reincarnation is 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 real and it's in the Bible. Verse eleven. <clears throat> well, you know what? Before I pull verse eleven, let me pull verse ni Matthew nineteen and twenty eight. So, you know what, Salakia, John, let me get John first. John 1 and 21. And these are the people asking John the Baptist 
if if he was Elijah. And this in this verse it says Elias, because that's Elias is the Greek way of saying Elijah. Okay. Well, let me start at. I'll start at. Yeah, I'll just start at 19. John 1, 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? See, so the Jews, which were the, you know, the, the two-thirds, really, the, the, um, they, were, they, were, they were Gentiles at this time. Jew is, represents the tribe of Judah. So these are so-called blacks. And Levites are actually... Um, so-called Haitians you know you so you had basically the American black and the, and the Haitian was coming from Jerusalem to ask John who he was because because at this time they were Gentiles because they didn't understand the truth because they were just like right now they were indoctrinated by by uh, Esau Edom's philosophies all right so just like you don't know about regeneration you don't know you're an Israelite the same thing with these people that are asking John who he was, all right? But this was in the time of Greece. And you gotta know, Greece was, was a, uh, an Edomite rulership, all right? Greeks are so-called white people. Verse 20. And he, conf so they asked him, who art thou, all right? In verse 20. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the anointed one meaning he was saying he's not Yahweh Shai because they thought he was the savior because of the work he was doing right verse 21 and they asked him what then art thou Elias and he said I am not art thou that prophet and he answered no so they asked him first if he was Yahweh Shai and then they asked him, okay, if you're not Yahweh Shai, then are you Elijah, the prophet? And he says, he denied both. But, but you have to step back and ask, and, and ask yourself, why are they asking him if he were these, was these men? And it goes back into what we were reading in Ecclesiastes. It said, there is no new thing under the sun. All right, the regeneration. You see, you people right now are dumbed down. You don't have no idea of regeneration, reincarnation, because that's not what Esau Edom teaches, because he's a deceiver, right? He don't teach that in his church. So, back then, they, they were more spiritual. They had more understanding. Even though they were Gentiles, they still had more understanding than you two-thirds here in Babylon, America, because they were asking him, are you Elijah? Are you Yahweh Shai? He told them no. All right. Um, so I'm going to go back to Ecclesiastes. And this is why he told them no. That he was not those men. It says, Ecclesiastes 1 and 11. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of the things that are to come with those that shall come after. See? So the reason why he was telling them, no, I'm not those men, is because there's no remembrance of the former things. You're not going to remember your, your past life, man. And just think about it, it would probably be a, a terrifying thing if you did remember your, your uh, past life. You remembered all the sins you did in your past life. So that would torment a person if you remembered all everything you did. That's gonna torment you. You see. So even though John didn't have a remembrance of who he was, let me see. Let me get back to that verse. Even though he didn't remember who he was, because he answered no, right? And let's, let's, let's keep reading. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? 
What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of Yahweh, as said the prophet Isaiah, and that's Isaiah is Isaiah, a Greek way of saying Isaiah. So these, these uh, Levites and Jews that were inquiring of who John the Baptist was, they wanted an answer, right? They were like, they were trying to, so they could go back and, and, and tell um, the Pharisees who sent them, right? Who were, you know, Greek Pharisees. They, they wanted, they, they needed an answer so that when they went back, they, they could tell them. But see, it wasn't meant for any of them to, to understand at that time because because even John denied that he was Elijah, all right? But then, later on, Yahweh Shai confirmed that John the Baptist indeed was Elijah the prophet, all right? Matthew 17 and verse 12, it says, But I say unto you, this is Yahweh Shai talking and he's addressing Okay, let me start at 11. Now let, let me start at, let, let, we'll start at 10. Matthew 17 and 10. And his disciples asked him saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? So they were asking him like basically, well the prophecy says Elijah has to come back before Yahweh Shai, right? And watch, 11. And Yahweh Shai answered them and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is already is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed, likewise shall the Son of Man suffer of them. See? So now he's telling him, well, I'm telling you, Elijah already came, which he knew that was John. John the Baptist. And John was restoring things because he paved the way for uh, Yahweh Shai. Right? He was, he was, uh, you know, he was getting the people in the right mindset, baptizing them, right? And John was saying, hey, I'm baptizing you with water, but the one that comes after me is going to baptize you with, with fire. Right? And that word, that word baptizing means to submerge. So, John was, Baptizing people in the lakes and the rivers and uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, we're, we're to be baptized By submerging ourselves in these in these verses in these scriptures, you see So He said you have done whatsoever they listed meaning they did whatsoever they wanted to um, Elijah which was John and what they do to him they they chopped off his head, man, and put it on a charger, which is like a, a metal, a metal, uh, metal plate. But that's what they did at the request of Herodias, uh, King Herod's uh, wife, okay, who was actually married to his brother first, and his brother was still alive, but he was popping his wife, and she asked for John the Baptist's head. On her birthday, all right. That's why Yahweh Shai is telling him, Elijah already came, and you knew him not, and you did whatever you wanted to him. And he says, likewise shall also, shall also the son of man suffer of them. So he, because he knew the prophecy, he knew he had to be the sacrificial lamb. He knew he was going to be, uh, you know, put on the cross. All right. And then verse, what does it says, verse thirteen. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. See? So, how in the heck is that going to, you know, how, how can Christians say that there's no reincarnation? Matthew 17 right here is one example. Elias already came, 
And then the disciples say, oh, they understood that was John the Baptist. Why? Because of reincarnation, regeneration. All right? So, that's just one example. I'm going to go to Matthew 19 and 28 and read that. And it says, And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is talking about the, the prophets who, who follow Yahweh Shai, the 144,000 who follow Yahweh Shai wherever he goeth, you know? So, and it says regeneration, which regeneration is another word for reincarnation, okay? Because why? We're regenerated. Our spirit is always, our spirit doesn't die, just a body. And then our spirit enters into another body, okay? And it shows you, hey, Verily I say unto you, those that follow me, the ones who are in his, the ones who, you know, the Elohim, the uh, the angels, who are the, the spirits that helped with the creation in the beginning. We help Yahweh Shai with the creation. We help, you know, as Yahweh sp um, spoke it out, the Elohim and the uh, and Yahweh Shai, we help literally create the plant, the, the, the earth. And we follow him through the regeneration, every lifetime we have, you see. Um, let's see, let me get that real quick. Yep, Revelation 14. This is talking about the prophets. The men of the Lord, right? Let's prove that in verse 3. Revelation will start at 3. Verse 14 and 3. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. So the prophets, that's why this is new information to you, because this is that new song we're singing. We're singing you a song, which is the scriptures. It's a parable, like likened unto a song. But there's only 144,000 that can learn the song, right? Yeah, you're going to have the, the one third who's going to listen and hearken, but they're not going to be on the same level as the prophets who learn the song and understand the whole song. All right. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Meaning, it's not talking about physical women. It's talking about doctrines. Okay, philosophies. It's a parabolic word. Woman represents philosophies or doctrines. Right? Like if, you, if you're in a Catholic church, we'll call you a spiritual whore. Then you see... It's actually because you're white, because you're you're not on the true doctrine. Because Catholicism is not the true doctrine of the scriptures. Catholicism is a Roman Catholic um, organization, which was set up to deceive. All right. It says, "For they are virgins." Now, it doesn't mean we haven't had sex. No, it means we're virgins. Why? Because we didn't let any of those. Uh, doctrines and philosophies that we were exposed to they didn't penetrate our soul why because when we heard the truth we hearkened and we just dropped what we were doing and that was our that was our deal you see these are they which follow the lamb who's Yahweh Shai whithersoever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the lamb See, so we're the first fruits of Yahweh and first fruits of unto Yahweh Shai. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God, of Yahweh. 
power. So the guile means deception. So when we teach, we don't teach with deception like like everybody else. No, we, we teach whether you're going to be offended or whether you're going to like it or whatever it is. We teach as it is written. So that's what it's talking about. No guile meaning no deception. All right? You can't... When, uh, uh, faithful member of GMS you're not going to find no deception in his mouth no guile in his mouth no, he's going to tell you as it is written if he's a faithful servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and uh, under the banner of GMS right Great Millstone you have a lot of these other uh, Israelite camps these Hebrew Israelite camps and they can you can find guile in their mouth right you got bishop nathaniel's group they they're uh, they're not telling you what the mark of the beast is which is deception they're telling you, you can go ahead and take the chip you know they don't want to use the true names even though their leader bishop nathaniel was teaching that name 20 years ago and there's video footage of him teaching the names that's an example of guile or deception. So the spirit start started to go off into talking about the elect, the prophets, but I'm going to be come back and focus on what I originally was talking about, which was uh, reincarnation. I'm going to give you two more examples in the scriptures of reincarnation and proof that there's were reincarnated, re reincarnated regenerated all right i'm going to go for this example to daniel 12 in the last verse or well, the last two verses no the last verse well first i'm going to start at nine i'm going to read nine daniel 12 and nine you know i'll, I'll read it eight all right Daniel 12 and 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Yahweh, what shall be the end of these things? So he's asking about the end of the world, right? Daniel is. Verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end of till the time of the end. So he told Daniel, just go your way. You're not going to get this understanding until the time of the end. Why? Because you had to be regen regenerated. To understand verse 10 many shall be purified which is the prophets the ones who follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth the ones who follow Yahweh Shai through the regeneration or reincarnation all right verse verse 10 again many shall be purified that's the prophets and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand so if this is too hard for you to understand what we're breaking down, what I'm teaching, what am I expounding on, then guess what? You're, that's a good sign you're the wicked. Because the elect understand this easily. They have a meek spirit when they're taught reincarnation. They don't sit there and buck up and try and say, oh, that's a Hindu thing, or that's, a, you know, that's not a Christian thing, or that's not... That's not true. That's not in the Bible. No, I'm showing you examples that it is in the Bible. All right? So if you can't receive this, that reincarnation is true, it's because of what we just read. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. All right? And I'm going to jump down to verse 13, because he tells Daniel, But go thy way, but go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest... And stand in thy lot at the end of the days. See? So, he said, go your way, and because you're, you're going to rest, meaning you're going to die. But guess what? You're going to still, you're, you're still going to um, stand in thy lot at the end of days. Alright? Let me see if I can find another verse that I just came to remembrance. Let's see, I'm not 
sure where it's at, but if I can find it, Lord's will. Okay, so I can't find it, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to move on to uh, the other example I had of reincarnation. So you see, he told Daniel that you're going to be in your lot. And what is your lot? What's Daniel's lot? He was a prophet. So he was going to be teaching. Yahweh told him he's going to be teaching. And you're going to stand in your lot at the end of the days, even after you rest, right? Because we read it earlier. There's no th new thing under the sun. Everything is a cycle. Everything is regenerated. He gave you the example of the wind, the waters, the... Uh, the rivers, you know, and it said, the thing that hath been, it is which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun, including people, right, including ourselves, our soul is, never dies, man, it re-enters into another body to the fourth and fifth generations, okay, I'll give you another example of regeneration, because remember, they were asking John, are you Elijah the prophet? He said, no, I'm not. Why? Because there's no remembrance. But then Yahweh Shai said, well, indeed, Elijah the prophet did come. You see, but you stumbled on him. And they also stumbled on Yahweh Shai. And they also stumble on the elect, the prophets, the 144,000. All right? In these days, they don't believe we're the prophets. They don't believe we were regenerated holy souls. All right. And wisdom, if you're a prophet, wisdom always enters into your soul every single lifetime you have. Every time you're, well, actually, I should say it never leaves your soul. You just have to be born again, like you literally born. And then as you get older in each lifetime, if you're a prophet, that, that lot, you're going to, that lot is going to, you're going to stand in that lot. Just like he told Daniel. Alright, and there's that verse, the spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophets. Let's get that one. The spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophets, KJV. Watch, we'll go to 1 Corinthians. So you were a prophet back then in the ancient times, you were a prophet over and over and over up until now. Through the spirit and power of and wisdom, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. See? So the prophets are always finding standing in their lot when they when we become alive in our new bodies each 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 lifetime. You're a prophet every time. All right, and my last example, I'm going to go to the book of 2nd Ezra 16 and verse. All right, I'm going to start because this is a good example too, because Ezra, Yahweh was dealing with Ezra and um, he was just like Daniel he was showing them the times of the end right that's what he does with his prophets he he gives us the vision of the end like we literally visualize America being missled up all right in the words of my eight-year-old daughter she coined that term missled up America's gonna get missled up she said all right so Yahweh Shem Yahashai kept kept showing the prophets throughout all of the the, the different um, ages that there was going to be a, a destruction and they had to all describe it with similitudes which is like a parable they didn't have the word missile so different prophets called the missiles different things whatever he could describe the best way he could right flying serpents in this in this case Ezra it says arrows all right which is representing the missiles Second Ezra 16 and 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, 
his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world all right so those arrows are is a metaphor for missiles because as we always tell you you can't shoot a regular bow and arrow from america to russia or from russia to america no this is a parable for uh, the missiles that he saw and the visions that Yahweh Bashem Yashai gave him. All right, verse fourteen. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. And those those modern those missiles are considered a plague. I mean, would you agree? It's gonna fuck this whole place up, man. So that's a major plague that's gonna hit the planet Earth. Are those nuclear missiles? World War Three. Verse 15, the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. So what fire is that? It's going to be thermonuclear fire. And Ezra described it as an arrows being shot to the ends of the, ends of the uh, earth or ends of the world. Verse 16, like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. So, now he's telling them the power of these arrows, right? They're powerful and they're not going to return. Once they, once they hit the nuke missiles, once they shoot them, once they press the button, you can't, there's not another button, but you could make the missile come back. It's too late. You, you know, you make that decision, which these countries are going to make that decision because Yahweh is going to put it in their heart to do it. Uh, and, and it's that's it, man. Verse 17. This is Ezra's talking. He said, Woe, and this woe means destruction. He said, Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? See, so he was freaking out when he saw that vision. And he knew, he, he understood reincarnation. He knew that he would be back. He said, oh shit, who's going to deliver me from that? Who's going to deliver me from that nuclear fire? Which, like I said, he was calling it arrows being shot to the ends of the world. And he saw the, you know, he saw the vision of the, the, the foundation of the earth being burned up, consumed with fire. You see? And, and like I said, he said, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Now, if he didn't understand reincarnation, why would, why would he say that? Why would he say, who's going to deliver me? The reason is because reincarnation is in the, is in the Bible. All right? And like I say, if you, if you don't have the spirit to receive that knowledge and that wisdom, then that's a sign you're wicked. Because we're giving it to you right out the scriptures. We're explaining it to you. We're expounding on the scriptures. And... Um, you still don't receive it, then you you got to consider yourself wicked because that's what the Bible calls you. None of the wicked shall understand, right? So with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Ha Rekha Kodash, double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam, who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.